Oregon would not be Oregon without the salmon that push up its rivers and streams each year. Along the banks of the John Day River, the Jacobs family has worked hard to protect and improve salmon spawning habitat. You know, the, the, the salmon, it's, you know, they're a native species to the John Day River and it's important for people to, you know, to, to maintain those native species that, um, you know, we want to restore this habitat to what it was like, you know, however many years ago and to get the, the native species back um, into the system. And we've done some cooperative uh, projects with the NRCS also on um, uh, gated pipe projects and some irrigation efficiency projects to try to be more efficient with water. Um, we've done um, several different drain projects where they've drained swampy meadows. Um, so it was kind of a it was a good win-win situation for for us where we got the fields drained and got higher productivity out of them, and it also was returning more water so they'd have a higher uh, river flow during the the peak season, like in uh, August, you know, when the when the river's drawn down. So it's helping cool water and add more volume for better spawning habitat. You know, we've actually taken acreage away from our land, you know, grazing acreage and haying acreage uh, with the fences, and, but it was a decision on our part that we wanted to do, you know, something positive for the ecosystem and for this, for the riparian habitat of the John Day River, and we felt it was, you know, it's our responsibility as landowners to, to do a good job with that because we're the ones that have to live it day to day, and our, our families are going to have to, and our kids and grandkids, and you know, we have 100-year goals around here, and longer than that, you know, we're here for the, for the duration, and so that's, uh, that's real important to us. Perhaps no other natural resource is more critical to the future of Oregon than water. For generations, ranchers have understood the need not only to conserve its quantity, but also ensure its quality. The stewardship of the Martins, who ranch in the Baker Valley, has resulted in protection of both. The uh, water conservation and the impoundment that we've done and the water quality and the management of it that we've done here is so extremely important for not only production agriculture but for the environment. Uh, you know, this creek that we're on right now, which is Wolf Creek, is uh, a continuous year-round flow now because of this reservoir. Uh, I like to relate back to uh, an old-timer that when I first got going in this business here, he related to me that uh, when his kids were little, and that was before the Wolf Creek Dam was put in, that they would catch uh, eight to 10 inch trout in Wolf Creek. And that after the reservoir was built, that his grandkids would come over and they would catch uh, 12 to 18 inch trout out of it. The sustainability of, of what we're doing here is uh, beyond measure, you know. And this is only one part, one small area of what irrigated agriculture does for Oregon. You take just this one small project and multiply it by the many that are around the state and it, it, re it relates to huge economic impact as well as environmental. The beef cattle industry in Oregon contributes about $560 million directly to the Oregon economy. Now our local chamber of commerce in like Ontario or Baker City say that those agriculture dollars turn over seven times. So that 560 million dollar direct contribution just from the sale of cattle and calves uh, turns into you know a couple of billion really quick. The farm, ranch, and families in this state provide 10 percent of our state's economy so agriculture in the state is very very much a critical part of Oregon's economy and it's done by just our fellow um, members in the community. The product that we produce we want the most wholesome healthy product that we can and raised in the most common sense practical way that is, is that's in a sustainable method that is going to preserve this this uh, ranch and, and then our property and and the resources that we have for future generations. The contribution to the economy is huge. The contribution to open space, to jobs, to fish and wildlife, to water. We're basically the front line out here in the country on everything that's important to Oregonians. If we don't have ranchers out taking care of the land, who is going to take care of it? And what is going to be the cost of the public of doing that? I was raised and born where I live, and, and so was my dad, and, and so was his dad. And uh, we obviously provide a service to the country, and we're, and we're growing food, and, and we like doing that, but it's not 
that's really not the reason we're there. We're there because we're emotionally attached to the ground and, and we like uh, living that lifestyle. We simply can't survive if we don't take care of it. And, and I think every rancher, and I don't know very many that don't, uh, who are, are uh, interested in seeing that, that their ranch is sustainable, that the, um, that the footprint on the land is, is uh, as light as possible, and that the land can continue to be productive. And, and in that way, um, we are environmentalists. The ranching industry's commitment to Oregon is not just a passing fancy. It's steeped in tradition, tempered by reality, Tested by trial and error, ranchers are Oregon's original stewards of the land, protecting its open spaces, streams, and meadows. It's a community of people, of Oregonians. And because of the work they do, Oregon remains a land of contrast, where there's room enough to dream and room enough for all.